because right now we are heading on Five Live Sport to the O2 Arena in London. It's seen some fights already in its relatively short lifetime, but it will have seen nothing like this if Britain's Kell Brook can upset the odds and somehow beat the great Gennady Golovkin for the middleweight championship of the world. Your commentary team, a former world heavyweight champion in David Hay, the man who brings boxing to life on the radio, Steve Bunce, and a man in 40 years at the BBC who may never have told a story like the one he could tell tonight. It's over to you, Mike Costello. You never, never know, especially in this great sport of boxing in a howl of derision just made its way around this famous arena as images of the champion Gennady Golovkin were posted onto the huge screens directly above us here at ringside. The atmosphere, as it is so often in this huge arena, is crackling here ahead of one of the most eagerly awaited fights ever seen in this country. Can Kell Brook pull off the upset of the magnitude of Randolph Turpins against Sugar Ray Robinson in 1951, a fight listened to on BBC Radio by King George VI and came running down the stairs of Buckingham Palace saying he's won, he's won. Lloyd Hunnigan beat Don Curry in Atlantic City in 1986 and less than a year ago Tyson Fury dethroned Vladimir Klitschko ending a 10-year reign. We're into Sweet Caroline, a familiar part of the big fight build-ups here, and it is also a sign that the appearance of the two men is upon us. Gennady Golovkin unbeaten in 35 fights, Kell Brook unbeaten in 36, and Steve Bunce, it's so hard to stay in your seat once again. Mike, we've been at ringside before when Ricky Hatton came out at 2 o'clock in the morning with 20,000 people up in Manchester. We've been here when Joshua was thrown for a world title fight. We've been overseas in magnificent and massive fight. There is something about this arena. It has lifted us now for the last two years and it has a fitting premier stage tonight with Golovkin, one of the finest fighters of the last 10 or so years. The greatest fighter to ever come out of the Eastern Bloc by some considerable distance against the man Kell Brook, seemingly going for the impossible, but the impossible is possible. That's what they say at the Paralympics, and that's what we can still say here tonight. And David Hay on the combat comeback trail, and it's because of nights like this that you've been tempted back into the ring. Yeah, I'm looking around now at Yota Arena. You know, I've had my last two fights here. Absolutely spectacular, you know. Every seat sold like it is tonight. The, 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 the electricity, everybody knows there's something coming. Everyone's feeling that everyone wants to come here. And although they're here to support Kell Brook in this impossible mission, they're also here to pay respect to one of the pound for pound best foxers on the planet. That's a great point you made there, David. And I was making that to Tom Loft, the manager of Gennady Golovkin. I said they may boo, they may cheer, there may be some pantomime cat calling. But I'm telling you now, if Gennady Golovkin was fighting a guy from Uzbekistan tonight, they'd still come out for him. He is a modern great. And as I've mentioned before, a dozen or so times in the last in the last six weeks on Five Life, he's a great ambassador for not just our sport, but for any sport. Well, when we were watching images being relayed to us here at ringside of Kell Brook in the dressing room, we saw a whiteboard posted up with messages scrawled across among them saying, relax and enjoy and born to be king. There is also a whiteboard in the gym of Abel Sanchez in Big Bear, California. On it, it says, one, Muhammad Ali. Number three, a long list of names, including Mike Tyson, Sugar Ray Robinson, Floyd Mayweather, many, many others. Number two is vacant. Abel Sanchez said when he first started to work with Gennady Golovkin back in 2010, that he would put him in that position by the end of his career. And the cheers that ring around this arena are because on the screens high above us, we see images now that show Kell Brook making his way along the long and lonely corridors. Yes, he's accompanied by his training team and by security personnel, but this is all about Kell Brook now and holding himself together before he reaches this arena here and where he could make history like no British boxer before.
like no British boxer before, Mike, and he knows it, and suddenly, for the first time, and I'm quite pleased, he looks a little bit more serious. I've seen too many smiles. I've seen too much confidence. I've seen too much belief in people telling you and patting you on the back and saying, don't worry, Golovkin's not got a great defence. Golovkin's tight at the weight. And suddenly, Kale looks like a different human being. We saw some rather pensive pictures of him in, in his changing room, and now he's coming to the ring with that look on his face. They call it the game face. I don't like that expression. It's the face that says, I'm ready, and I'm ready now to fight. In the centre of the ring is the famous MC, Michael Buffer, over on the far side of the ring. Leaning against the blue corner is Dominic Ingle, the man who's been behind so many of the successes of Kell Brook. World champion, we shouldn't forget, in the welterweight division. Won the title in upset style two years ago, almost to the month, in Carson, California, against Sean Porter, when he went in that night as well as the second favourite. And the presence of Michael Buffer in the centre of the ring is a signal that very soon he will be introducing Kell Brook behind us as we look around the crane annex like many of the spectators here. And there's one single spotlight now raining down on the ring, and that is on Michael Buffer as Kell Brook waits patiently in the corridors way down at the far end of the arena. Ladies and gentlemen, the moment we've all been waiting for has arrived. So, from the O2 Arena, London, England. Let's get this party started! Down and let's hope the referee isn't counting the other way over Kell Brook in the early stages and here. Now, coming to the ring first from Sheffield, England, the challenger, the undefeated, the special one, her special K. Well, this is an all-seater arena, but everybody here on their feet, waiting to get a glimpse of the appearance of the challenger. And as is customary now in the build-up to these big fights, they're watching a video highlights package of Kell Brook, both in training and in competition throughout his long professional career. 12 years this month since he turned professional. It took him 10 long years to become world champion as opposed to the likes of Carl Froch, who got there in six years, Joe Kalzaki in four years, Ricky Hatton took eight years. It all depends on the type of progress, the type of athlete they are, and the type of opposition they face on the way through. David Hay, alongside me, took five years. Half the time it took Kell Brook to get there, but he is still unbeaten, has made three successful defences, but this is a mighty leap up in class described by promoter Eddie Hearn as an outrageous leap up in class. All of the lights by Kanye West is the signature tune that accompanies him to the ring. A great comedic American journeyman of the past, Bruce Strauss, once said that there's a performance in every fighter somewhere, sometime in his career, when all of the lights come on at once. Is this the night for Kell Brook? As the doors part, leaving the image of the one single individual at the back of the arena. He bounces up onto his toes. It's at this stage of fight night that so many of Gennady Golovkin's opponents have taken on the appearance of a man walking to the gallows, but not Kell Brook. He's virtually skipping down the runway now, the ramp towards the competition floor. He is studious. He is, of course, looking nervous. He needs the fear to work for him. But he says he stared death in the face two years ago this month when he was stabbed on holiday in Tenerife and suffered a 12-inch wound where the blood flowed for 100 yards behind him as he sought help. He said, there's nothing Golovkin can do to make me fearful after that, as he makes his way towards the ring now. And it's a pacey walk to the ring. 
very close to us now, just a few feet to our left. He will make his way up the ringside steps and onto the canvas. He pauses just briefly as he reaches the inner ringside area. And this is a very serious, stern-looking Kelbrook, unlike any of the build-up set-piece events earlier this week. And listen to the ovation. One thing, Mike, looking at his face, looking at his demeanour, looking at the corner men, looking at the people walking with them, it's all suddenly dawned on them. It was nice in July. It was fantastic when they were out in Tenerife, when the sun was shining, when he could eat five meals a day, David. He was loving it. And suddenly, it's got real. The training camp's gone. The, moon, the sun sets, the sun rises, the clear water, the sea. You've had that in northern Cyprus. You've had that. Suddenly they're in the ring, and suddenly another man's going to be walking to the ring. The fearsome, most feared middleweight in the world. It's all getting very, very real now. And slowly but surely, each and every one of these people, other than the referee, are going to slowly start getting out of the ring, leaving himself and uh, Gennady Golovkin ready to do <laughs> battle. It's getting very, very real now. And you can see the look in the face of Kell Brook. You know, it's not fun anymore. You know, there's no, you know, quick, smart quips now. This is this is the real stuff now. He knows and now, it's time to go to war. Making his entrance to the ring, the undefeated middleweight world champion, Gennady. Gennadyovich Golovkin, a.k.a. Triple J. Well, various sections of the crowd choosing to boo one of the greatest pound-for-pound -pound fighters on the planet at the moment. Officially, according to statistics, the hardest punching middleweight champion in history. And again, we're seeing the highlight reel on the screens above us, and some highlight reel it is. 35 fights unbeaten, 22 of them in a row inside the distance, among 32 in total inside the distance. And the last 16 of those have been in world title fights. This, his first appearance in the United Kingdom. This is the seventh nation that he has fought in. And fittingly, Seven Nation Army is the song that accompanies him on his walk to the ring. And it has done since he based his career in the United States. One of the lines, and contrary to rumors, it wasn't written by any of his opponents, is a Seven Nation Army couldn't block me as he waits now to make his entrance. And again, the doors open at the far end of the arena. It's behind us. If we crane our necks, it's pointless. We can't see anything because everybody between us and the back of the arena is also standing. And now Golovkin makes his way through in a hooded gown, which is predominantly gold and various shades of blue in the colors of his native Kazakhstan, born in the country in which Vladimir Klitschko was also born in Karaganda. And he won't worry about the hostel hostility here because his trainer, Abel Sanchez, was telling me that if you want to know what Karaganda, his hometown, was like in his life, he said, just imagine worse than the worst of Detroit. And long before he laced on the gloves, he was being taught to fight by his two older brothers. And it's led to a distinguished amateur career, world junior champion, world senior champion, Olympic silver medalist, and now 35 fights unbeaten as the number one middleweight in the world. Abel Sanchez, his trainer for the past six years, is first into the ring. Golovkin flicks back the hood, blows a kiss to the crowd, and steps between the centre two of the four ropes. It's almost like a different Golovkin than the one we saw on Monday, the one we worried about on one Wednesday, the one we peered at unknowing on Thursday. And that road, Mike, is called a Chapin Road, a traditional road, and it's often lined with swan down. That is a Kazakh robe for Kazakh warriors, worn by the ultimate Kazakh warrior tonight. You know, Genny Golovkin has walked to the ring now with 17 consecutive title fight victories by knockout. What has he got to fear in a fighter who's two weights below him, who doesn't have a big knockout ratio himself, even at the weight of welterweight? Is there's a supreme confidence that's oozing from Triple G tonight. He walked to the ring without a care in the world, 
I'm hoping that's going to work against him. I, re I really am. But uh, Kel Brook, he knows it's all business. Looking into his eyes now, taking deep breaths. You know, everybody around him trying to give him some last-minute advice. Not that it's, any of it's going to help, but, you know, you can, you can tell by his, his coach, Ingle, that he's feeling the pressure now. He really is. Both Dominic Ingle and Kel Brook looking across a long way across the Ladies ring to Golovkin, who's just above us here, and now the formalities with Michael Buffer. Respective national anthems. First, for the challenger, God save the Queen. Defending world champion, the national anthem of Kazakhstan. the legendary O2 Arena, London, England. Eddie Hearn for Matchroom Boxing and K2 Promotions Managing Director Tom Loeffler, along with Triple G Promotions, are proud to present the main event of the evening. 12 rounds of boxing for the middleweight championship of the world. Sponsored by Tesla Bank Expo 2017. Capital Holding, StubHub, JD Sports, WeBuyAnything.com, and Daffabet, broadcast by Sky Sports Pay-Per-View and HBO. Sanctioned by the British Boxing Board of Control, President and Steward in Charge tonight, Charles Giles. The World Boxing Council, President Mauricio Suleiman, Supervisor Alberto Leon. The International Boxing Federation, President and Supervisor tonight, Darrell F. Peoples, the International Boxing Organization, President and Supervisor tonight, Ed Levine. The three judges scoring from Italy, Guido Cavalieri. From Canada, Craig Metcalf. From Canada, Benoit Rousseau. And in charge of the action at the bell, World Championship veteran referee, Marlon Wright from Canada. And now, ladies and gentlemen, 
the officials are in place and they are ready. The fighters are in the ring and they are ready. Boxing fans, are you ready? For the thousands in attendance and the millions watching around the world, from the O2 Arena, London, England, let's get ready to rumble! Introducing first, fighting out of the blue corner, with his trainer, Dominic Engel, wearing red with gold trim. Official weight, 11 stone, 5 pounds, 1 half ounce or 159.4 pounds. His professional record, a perfect one, consisting of 36 fights, 36 victories, including 25 wins by knockout, with 16 stoppages inside the distance in his last 20 contests. Tonight, he is the challenger. He's the fighting pride of Sheffield, Yorkshire, England. The undefeated welterweight champion of the world, the special one, Hell Special K. And across the ring, his opponent, fighting out of the red corner with his trainer, Abel Sanchez officially weighing in at 11 stone, 5 pounds, or 158.9 pounds. As a professional, also a perfect record. 35 fights, 35 victories, including 32 wins by knockout, including 22 consecutive KOs, and he has KO'd every opponent he's faced over the last eight years. This Olympic medalist, from Karaganda, Kazakhstan, is the reigning, defending, undefeated, universally recognized, true middleweight champion of the world, Gennady Gennadyovich Golovkin, a.k.a. Ripple. Well, we're almost there. More Paralympic action coming up after the fight in the US Open Women's Final, which is on Sports Extra now. It's currently one set all between Kerber and Pliskova. The last of the formalities here at ringside, the referee's instructions from Marlon Wright of Canada. OK, gentlemen, I gave you both my instructions in the dressing room. I want a good team fight. Remember, protect yourself at all times, and you must obey my command at all times. Good luck to both of you. Touch them up. Well, since the contracts were signed, the attitude of Kell Brook has been bring it on. Long since known as the special one, he will need a performance as special as any produced by any British boxer in history to deliver here this evening. Can he defy the hardest punching middleweight champion in history? All the dignitaries, all the members of the re respective camps have left ringside and the bell sounds for the first round. Ahead of the first appearance in the United Kingdom, of Gennady Golovkin, one of the greatest middleweights of all time, with this astonishing knockout record. And the two men in centre ring, the first punch is thrown by Gennady Golovkin. It was an attempted left hook, and he was made to miss. Then he flicks out a jab. A jab from Brook does land, but only on the side of the face of Golovkin, who looked as though he was about to try to avoid that shot. A clipping left hook from Kel Brook as Golovkin charges forward and Brook times it nicely and catches him on the way in. But Golovkin goes after his man, as if he can take those punches with impunity. Lands a jab, Kel Brook is on the back foot. There's an apprehensive look about him. Why not, given the record of the man in front of him? As they exchange jabs in the centre of the ring, one from Brook gets through, lands on the high part of the head of Golovkin, who's holding the gloves, golden gloves they are at the moment, with strips of blue as well in the colours of his native Kazakhstan to match his shorts which are predominantly light blue, almost turquoise. Bright red trunks worn by Kelbrook who takes a solid jab, then a short clipping right hand from Golovkin who steps to the right, cuts off the ring's face as Kelbrook moves around towards his left and there's been a solid exchange of jabs two or three times in the opening round so far. 
Brook is driven back to the ropes on the far side of the ring, close to his own corner. And now Golovkin opens up with a hook to the body, hook to the head, and Kel Brook is on unsteady legs inside the first half of the first round. Kel Brook is shaken by a cluster of punches over on the far side of the ring, and suddenly now Kel Brook finds himself in danger of suffering his first defeat and inside the opening round as Brook goes after his man now with a lovely right uppercut left hook and then he punches again from the centre of the ring but they bounce only off the gloves of Golovkin brave work from Brook here but the damage initially was done by that searing body shot left hook beneath the right elbow of Kel Brook and Brook now moves around towards his left but walks only onto a right hand follow-up left hook from Golovkin who's showing the power he's punching here in the opening round Brook though coming back at him with a right hand a jab to the body from Brook refusing to yield here even though he was badly shaken earlier on in the round 45 seconds to go in this the first round as Golovkin now just steps after his man throws another one of those left hooks towards the body he misses misses with an overhand right takes a clipping jab from Kel Brook he tries to time that shot as Golovkin was marching forward Brook now feels his way in with a couple of jabs two strong overhand rights from Kel Brook and then a couple of uppercuts and Brook goes forward once again Brook lands a solid left hook and the crowd roar their appreciation here as Kel Brook has come back strongly in the last half a minute of the opening round what a start here from two men known for their explosive punching here and Golovkin goes after him once again drives him back towards his own corner but Kel Brook moves off, throws a right hook then a left hook, they land on the gloves of Golovkin but they're a sign that Kel Brook has taken that shot taken it well and come back to finish strongly at the end of the first round David Hay well it, it, it went unfortunately how I kind of feared it would do with uh, Gennady, Gennady Golovkin just walking through Kel Brook's uh, punches and landing pretty much at will the shots that missed Kel Brook weren't because Kel Brook was slipping him, it was simply because, you know, Genley was just letting his hands go. He didn't seem like, you know, he, he was that bothered. He was, it looks like he was literally going through the motions. It looked like he was sparring in there. You know, he wasn't, he didn't have too much fear for what was coming back at him, which allowed Kel Brook to land some good quality shots at the end of the round. But those shots, unfortunately, bounced off Triple G's chin. And uh, the left hook that Kennedy hit him with in that first round, really shook him, really shook uh, Kel to his boots. I was really surprised at how Golovkin went out with his hands. We've seen him do that, absolutely fearless, a bit reckless. What a round, Mike, what a round! First round to Golovkin. Absolutely, Mike. First round to Golovkin, we're into the second round, but Kel Brook came back so strongly at the end of that first round, but now he takes a solid right hand and two successive jabs, and those three punches with a follow-up flurry from Golovkin drive Kel Brook onto the back foot. Gamely, he tries to hold his station in the centre of the ring, but the sheer power of the punching of Golovkin is driving him back. Brook tries a right hand over the top, but Golovkin saw it coming and just dropped his right knee and swayed inside it. Brilliant defensive work, subtle, as David Hay was saying earlier on. Often goes unnoticed how clever he is in defence. He's holding the hands high here, goes forward now and powers in two solid left hooks as Kelbrook tried to hold on to Golovkin's right arm on the blind side of the referee. The two men in the centre of the ring. Golovkin clasping his gloves around the high part of his head as Kelbrook sets off with a brilliant four-punch attack here now but again most of the shots landing on the gloves of Golovkin one of them did sneak through the middle but Golovkin marches forward unperturbed as if he can punch knowing that those shots from Kel Brook won't have any kind of troubling effect he says he's never been knocked down and says in fact never been close in almost 400 contests now he drives Kel Brook back to the ropes just above us here two solid jabs and we see the effect of the head of Brook being bounced backwards by those solid jabs from Gennady Golovkin most fighters throw those jabs really as a range finder he's actually floored opponents with a jab that's the natural power of the man he tries now to wing in with a left hook Slightly wild work at times from Gennady Golovkin, I think, because he doesn't yet respect the power of Brook. But he is having success time and again, Golovkin, with the straight left-hand jab. Copybook punch that he would have developed in the Soviet-style training in his amateur days representing Kazakhstan, whose colours he proudly bears on his trunks. He goes forward now, looking to land another one of those left hooks. It was in the mid-range between the chin and the abdomen area. He's landed so many solid body punches that have caused so many problems for his opponents in the past. And the crowd now really trying to lift 
Kel Brook, who lands a brilliant left uppercut, and then a right hand over the top. Kel Brook coming forward now. Three punch combination from Brook. Another right hand. Golovkin motions for him to come forward again. Brook takes up the invitation. Lands another solid right hand. Golovkin standing firm like a rock in the centre of the ring. But Brook is opening up here. Brilliant work from Kel Brook, the special one starting to unload in special style here with 20 seconds to go in the second round. He knew he had to be brave. He knew he had to stand his ground, try to make his speed work. He's making it work here, and he's caught Golovkin repeatedly with heavy punches here. But Golovkin, it's noticeable, has just come straight on the attack once again. Golovkin tries to move on the inside, looks to throw it up as the bell sounds at the end of the second round and the O2 arena erupts. One of the finest three minutes, Mike, you and I have ever sat down and watched, and I'm going back 30 years when we were kids watching amateur fights, to some of the fights we've sat at around the world. That was pure quality. Golovkin not necessarily took his foot off the pedal, that's too strong, but he suddenly left himself there, and then Kel opened up, coming up through the middle, great way to go, the short left hook up through the middle, the right cross coming across. It didn't hurt Golovkin, let's get that right. It didn't shake Golovkin, but you knew Golovkin was hurt. David, and that round was, was, I think that was Brooks' round. That was definitely Brooks' round there. It was an absolutely perfect round. He stood there, let his hands go. Get it, Triple Tree called him on after he took a big right hand. I, do, I just hope he can maintain this. Kelbrook hasn't been known for having the best stamina at the, at, as the fight goes into the later rounds. And we're carrying this an additional 13 pounds of weight. I've just got my fingers crossed that he can carry it through. Well, both men are slow to rise from their stall. They've both taken heavy shots over the course of the first six minutes, and we have it around a piece. Who would have forecast that? As Golovkin goes forward with a solid jab now, tries to open up in the centre of the ring, and Brook goes down, but the referee waves his arms to say that wasn't a knockdown. Brook got caught in a tangle of feet there as Golovkin marched onto the front foot. Golovkin lands a jab, misses by a long way with the follow-up right hand as Brook timed it and saw it coming. Another solid jab gets through from Golovkin, who appears to have had a talking to from his corner here because he started in really lively fashion. He misses with a right uppercut, mercifully for Brook, who's under sustained assault here, bounces off the ropes as he tries to avoid the latest attack from Golovkin, who's still going after his man now. The action has moved to the far side of the ring, and he lands a brilliant left hook to the body, just Golovkin. Now he tries an overhand right, misses with a left hook. Kel Brook, now he's driven back to the neutral corner on the far side of the ring. Moves almost immediately to the corner here, the red corner, Golovkin's own corner, and Brook is blinking out of the right eye, and so he comes forward and tries to throw a cluster of punches in the centre of the ring all the time. Courageous and brave, but he takes a big right hand, followed by a concussive left hook from Golovkin, who's going after his man now. And Brook takes a huge lung full of breath. When will he get some respite? The look on his face says. He tries to throw a right hand. Golovkin sways underneath it. Halfway stage of round number three. A much more eventful contest than many had predicted here. But Kel Brook is significantly on the back foot here, scraping his back against the ropes just above us here, almost removing the skin from his back as he tries to elude the punches from this relentless attacking machine that is Gilardi Golovkin, who lands with one big left hook, misses with the second, and Kel Brook comes back with a counter right hand. Now two left hooks, right hand, right uppercut from Kel Brook. Applause at ringside, and once again, he takes the fight back to Gennady Golovkin. And Golovkin is being attacked and being challenged like never in his professional career. So much so that the great Kazakh just nod in approval as he took that latest flurry from Kel Brook. And is there blood now by the right eye of Kel Brook as Golovkin tries to open up neutral corner, far side of the ring. The punch is being exchanged both ways here. Both men having their time on top in this third round. What a contest this is developing into. Questions being asked of Golovkin, who lands a huge right hand. And now the left eye of Kelbrook is starting to close. Soon, he won't be able to see out of the eye. The troubles are growing for Kelbrook, but he swings back with a right hand. He knows not how to relinquish his pride here. In the centre of the ring, he lands a right hand. Golovkin finishes with a left hand as we head over to the far side now and listen in to Dominic Ingle, the trainer in the Kelbrook corner. He 
of noise here it's so difficult to hear what Dominic Engel is saying but that was such a fantastic round of boxing David Hay but just the sign that Kelbrook is beginning to wilt Kelbrook started looking really busted up in the last minute of that round he started looking a bit sorry for himself his mouth was open he was exhausted carrying these extra you know 13 pounds hasn't really helped his endurance here and taking punches really does sap your energy stores, you know, he, he, he signaled to his corner that he had a, some sort of high Something injury. With the eye. But you know what? I haven't seen any fighter, and I've seen all of Golovkin's big fights. I haven't seen one fighter take what Kell Brook's taken tonight from in Mike. I couldn't agree more. Kell Brook might have landed more punches on Golovkin in the first three rounds here than any of his opponents throughout his 16-fight world title reign. Golovkin also here is facing stern questions about his makeup as a fighter. We know he's got a strong chin, but can he also weather the occasional storms that come his way? They have managed at this stage to stem the flow of blood from the right eye of Kell Brook, but he's driven back to the corner just above us here, and we can hear the thud of the punches of Golovkin raining in on the body, the torso and the chin of Kell, Kell Brook in the centre of the ring, but still he comes back with a jab. Then an overhand right, flicks out a couple of jabs, gets on the back foot. Golovkin goes to the body with a left hook, follows up with a left hook to the head. But neither of them landed with the clinical precision that we've seen so often during his career. He goes to the body now with a brilliant right hand, misses with a left hook at Golovkin. And having made him miss, so Kelbrook comes back. Kelbrook now takes the ground in the centre of the ring. So, so brave here is Kelbrook. He steps off, though, and takes a solid jab. And once again, he blinks out of that right eye as the blood begins to blur his vision. He steps back towards the centre of the ring. Golovkin steps away, backs off this time, flicks out a couple of jabs. But time and again, Kelbrook is meeting him with exchanges of jabs in the centre of the ring, where the both men are stationed right now once again. Two solid jabs, three from Kelbrook, but he backs off almost voluntarily, moves around towards his left, potentially into the path of a right hand from Golovkin. Golovkin just throw it to the body area, but didn't really put his full body weight behind it. It was just a feeler of a punch. A jab from Kelbrook lands as Golovkin takes his time to configure his next move on the way in. Right hand from Golovkin gets through, then a second right hand to the body didn't, as the two men almost clash heads in a close quarter clinch on the far side of the ring. We're heading into the final minute of this, the fourth round. Oh, what an explosive contest it's been so far. Who could have predicted that Kell Brook would have matched Gennady Golovkin so often here, punch for punch, in the centre of the ring? Golovkin comes forward, tries an overhand right, left hook to the body, right hand to the chin does land as Brook is forced backward. His head is jarred back. He moves towards his own corner now, but he's got his eyes fixed on the face of Gennady Golovkin, trying to read what the Kazakh is going to do. Golovkin comes forward with a big overhand right, but Kell Brook just claims him on the inside and nullifies any of those punches that Golovkin couldn't find the punching room to throw. Golovkin now tries a right hook to the body, right hand over the top, both of them miss again. Last 20 seconds of this, the fourth round. And now Kell Brook comes forward with a left and a right, and again the crowd getting right behind him here. Could this possibly be one of the chapters on the way to a famous, famous upset? Another left hook from Kelbrook lands in the closing stages of round number four. And there's an urgency about the work of Golovkin. I wouldn't say desperation anywhere near at this stage, but certainly more urgency than we've seen in many of his world title fights at the end of round four. David Hay. I gave that round to Triple G, but Kelbrook to cover himself in glory here tonight. He really has let his hands, really let his, ha has, ha let his hands go. And I've never seen uh, Golovkin look this sloppy, look, get caught this easily, we know. I'm, I'm really hoping that Triple G hasn't taken this fight as seriously as he should have done, because as this fight gets into the later rounds, he's really going to need that slick defence that he's shown in prior fights. But Kell Brook is really and truly in the fight. I did not believe Kell Brook would hear the, the, the bell for the first of the for the fifth round. I thought he would get taken out in four rounds. He's proven me wrong. He's proven a lot of people wrong here. But you know, he's in this fight. He's landed good quality shots, and he's. He's got the respect and attention of Gennady Change Golovkin. Out. We've got a fire on our hands, Mike. We've certainly got a fire on our hands. On our cards, three rounds to one, but it just feels an awful lot closer as Kell Brook has really taken the contest.
to Golovkin, at times doing that on the back foot, allowing Golovkin to come forward and timing his counter punches with precision on the way in. But still work to do for Kel Brook here is if he is to pull off this famous upset that he so confidently predicted throughout the build-up. Golovkin works away to the body now. Good right hand, and then a left hook to the body. Right hand over the top, another left hook. And now Kelbrook definitely is hurt. He covers up on the ropes. He moves away just above us here. Golovkin is really starting to open up. And there are unanswered punches here at the start of the fifth round. Kelbrook just above us. Opens both arms as if to say, is that all have you got? But he's definitely hurt here with two minutes and 15 seconds still to go in round number five. Brooks steps off, having taken a long succession of punches, heavy punches to the chin. Many lesser men, many less brave and courageous men have succumbed by now to the great Gennady Golovkin, the heaviest puncher in the history of the middleweight division. But so far, Kel Brook has stood up to all those shots and now he turns south for and lands a terrific right hook onto the chin of Golovkin. But again, noticeably, Golovkin stands firm like a rock in the centre of the ring, refusing to move refusing to show any kind of weakness. He goes to the body, Golovkin, now lands an overhand right, and Brook looks tired, takes a long full of breath as he goes back to the neutral corner on the far side of the ring. And the cornermen of Golovkin, just to my side here, are imploring their man to come forward again, and he does. Two solid left hooks, one to the elbows, one to the chin, left, right, left hook. And now Dominic Engel on the far side of the ring, the trainer appears with the towel as Kelbrook fights back. The referee hasn't seen the towel as Golovkin continues on the attack. Now the referee sees it. Now the referee waves it off. Kelbrook turns to his corner as if to say what's going on. But Dominic Ingle, with about a minute to go in round number five, the long-time trainer of Kelbrook, has decided he's seen enough, has decided his man has taken enough on a night when Kel Brook's reputation has soared here this evening. Golovkin is lifted aloft by his cornerman, but never has he been posed questions like that in his World Championship campaigns from a man who was coming up two weight divisions. But in the fifth round, in the end, after a long, battering, painful succession of punches, Gennady Golovkin prevails. He is still the middleweight champion of the world. But what a go Kel Brook gave it. And that's how you lose a world championship fight when you're in against a man that no one thinks you can beat, that no one gives you a chance of beating. That's how you lose it. With 30 seconds to go, Kel Brook dropped his hands and called Gennady Golovkin in. He couldn't see out of the right eye. That's something we're going to discover in the next five minutes. He had no reply. He briefly pushed Golovkin back in the second round. He'd taken a slow beating. And David, we were saying before the fight, and you were hoping that it wouldn't be a slow beating. It would be a one single punch, and it's all over. It wasn't. That's the type of beating that if you can recover from, it takes a long time. But saying that, Mike, you're so right. Golovkin there had to answer, answer questions he's never had to answer, and ones that we didn't think he'd have to answer here tonight. Yeah, I, I, the, the person that tonight that really impressed me also was Dominic Ingle. That stoppage was absolutely was spot on. You've got to realise Kel Brook is a current welterweight champion. There was, he had no he had no business taking that onslaught on the ropes. You know, Dominic Ingle about 20 seconds prior to that was trying to get the fight stop. He threw in the towel. You know, that, I'm just so I'm so happy that he did that and didn't watch his fighter get drilled to the canvas because he can now. Give it six months, he's back in the ring, he's still earning money to his family, he's still, you know, defending his uh, welterweight title. Great bit of corner work from Dominic Ingle, best I've seen for a very long time. Such guts, Mike, we've sat ringside, we've watched heroics from men, we've seen men push themselves where they shouldn't have been, Darren Barker when he won the world title in Atlantic City, other fighters, we've seen controlled performances, David against the Beast from the East, but when you see pure heroism, pure, in some ways, stupidity and pure guts like we saw there, it gives you a lump in your throat. You have to take a gut check yourself. Of all the predictions I heard about tonight, and I did hear some that told me Kelbrook would reach the fifth round, nobody, but nobody told me he would reach the fifth round in that style. Yeah, he really, really landed. I've, I've never seen a Triple G take that much punishment in a fight. You know, he was genuinely bothered by that punishment. His corner was screaming at him instructions. I've never seen Triple G's corner looking that unsettled and that upset. They knew 
He was in trouble at certain stages. When I say trouble, I don't mean risking losing. He, was, losing. Hurt. I know what you're he was He was getting buzzed by those shots. You know, Golovkin was nodding occasionally like, after a big uh, sort of left hook would land from Kell Brook. You know, Golovkin would nod his head as though, yep, that was a very good shot. I tell you what, what is obvious, Mike, how fantastic Kell Brook, Dominic Ingle, and the rest of that motley crew from Winco Bank prepared in Tenerife and prepared when they got back to Sheffield. That was a mission today that started 20 odd years ago when he was just a child, a tumbler in the gym, in to entertain kids like Nassim Hamid. He was brave and fearless at the end. He's still arguing now with Dominic about the stoppage. He clearly couldn't see out of the right eye, and he had nothing left. He tried everything he could do, Mike. Most fighters against him, certainly the last 22, they've gone on the floor. He didn't go on the floor. He didn't want to. Well, if that's an advert for what they do for young men and women at the community centre, the gym at St Thomas's Church Hall in Winkerbank in Sheffield, then there is hardly a better advertisement. Kel Brook showing such pluck and such courage and we have to say such skill in time and again breaking down the defenses of Gennady Golovkin at times flustering the great Kazakh in the center of the ring but ultimately we were reminded of one of boxing's oldest adages that weight divisions are in place for a reason the good big man tonight did beat indeed the good little ladies man. and gentlemen the challengers corner the red corner indicated to referee Marlon Wright to call a halt to the contest Challenger retires the winner by TKO victory. His record now 36 and 0, 33 KOs, 23 consecutive wins by knockout. Still the undefeated universally recognized middleweight champion of the world, Gennady Gennadyovich Golovkin, aka Ripple. wide rousing applause in the end for the man they booed on the way into the ring and are cheering on the way out because they know they've seen one of the best pound for pound fighters on the planet here tonight they've seen him tested and they've seen him come through in the end with another powerful display of clinical aggression here brilliant work in the end by Gennady Golovkin but how he was tested by Kelbrook in a way that many couldn't and didn't predict Gennady Golovkin still the middleweight champion of the world unbeaten now in 36 fights as Kel Brook on the far side of the ring now contemplates his first defeat in 37 fights but none of the previous 36 have boosted his reputation in the way that he did here this evening with his performance here in the O2 arena what a night what a night indeed Mike we were we were talking about this night we were looking forward to this night we were expectant that we'd see something special and we did we saw one of the greatest modern fighters one of the greatest middleweights in history we saw him forced to go toe to toe sure he was leading by three rounds to one going into the fifth round he may have been leading but he had to fight in every round and Kell Brook simply refused to wilt simply refused to copy form I'm gonna throw this out there now and, I, and, I, and I'll tell you what we Maybe she was celebrating the victory and praising the bravery. What would have happened if Kell Brook hadn't have been so gung-ho? What if he'd have just tried to box for a couple of rounds? What if he'd have been aggressive but not as aggressive? He went toe-to-toe. -to -toe. Like I said at the start of the programme, he did believe he could knock him out, Dave. He truly believed he was a mini David Hay in there tonight. <laughs> and there was some Latvian bum in the other corner. Yeah, he went out there and let his hands go. You know, most people, most experts said he was going to try and sort of pick and nick the rounds and use his lateral movement. But he stood there, he let his hands go, and, you know, and he, and he went out in a blaze of glory. He really did. And you know, if, the, if his corner, if, if Dominic Ingle wouldn't have stopped it, he would have carried on. He would have carried on until he was laid out. But I was just so happy that his corner took a, pa a compassionate stance and saved him for another day. I was in a very similar situation in my 10th fight Thompson. against Carl Thompson. I, was just about I, to wanted say that. To, I wanted to carry on. My corner took a, took, took a decision, let's stop the fight, let's save for, save for another day. And seven fights later, you know, I, I, I was world champion. Well, the same thing happened in that fight, in a sense, you were trapped on the ropes, you were taking punches, you had nothing left, had, your heart was, was OK, your guts were OK, exactly. there's nothing you could do. Us same with Kelbrook tonight, though. Us boxers are the last people to know what's happening. When you're in the battle, when you're in the heat of the battle, you're just fighting. You know you, you can see the punches coming, you can take the shots, your legs might not be able to move, but you don't know when you're in there that you, don't, you, you can't win. 
His corner knows him better than anybody else does. They could see all that was going to happen was he was going to take more of a sustained beating. I was looking at I was looking at Kel's body language when he went back. I think at the end of the third round, after a, a half decent second, we gave him the second. Maybe we're being kind. I thought he nicked the second, Kel. But I looked at him in the, as he went back in the third round when he'd staged another rally. And what Golovkin had done then, Dave, was come back at him. So in, in all fairness, I do think he was breaking his heart. That's not the question, Kel's heart. But it was just the fact that everything you hit the guy with. It made no difference. He just kept snarling at you. He did, and, and every round, um, Triple G kept the pace going. He kept bringing it up. After this, the quiet second round, where I believe Kelbrook won the round. He was busy in that he round. He was very, sure. very busy, but he was. It, 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 like, it seemed like Kelbrook threw everything and the kitchen sink just to win that round. Yeah. We're in a 12 round fight here. You know, in the second round, you should never be digging into your reserves. But that's exactly what he had to do to nick that one round. Well, that's the point I was making there. What would happen? We're all geniuses the next day, yeah. Dave. We'd all be millionaires if we could buy the lottery ticket the day after the ticket was announced. But what would have happened had he boxed a little bit like he did there? Not like a classic Brendan Ingle fighter, not like a retreating showman like Johnny Nelson. But what if he had just been a bit aggressive, but not as gung-ho? It seemed to me that he went gung-ho in the second round, had his success in that round, but then found himself dragged into a brawl that he couldn't avoid, because what he does, Golovkin, he may not be the fastest mover in the world, but his feet get into place, and once his feet are in place, you can't get away from him, because his feet are in place, and he's hitting you with big shots. He sure is. And the, the thing what the thing what happens sometimes when you fight, sometimes it's actually easier to hold your feet and let your hands go than it is to keep moving. When someone like Gennady Golovkin's chasing you down, putting you under pressure, by keep moving, it feels as though you're losing the rounds. When, sure. when, when you hold your feet and let your hands go and have success, you kind of get drunk on your own success. Mm -hmm. And foolishly, you empty too much of your energy tank. You've got 12 rounds of, 12 rounds of energy. And he probably used six rounds in six rounds of energy in, in that one second in that round. One second round. Yeah. And bear in mind, he'd been hurt, really hurt in the first round. You and I had hit, hit our legs under the table as if to say, I told you so, but I didn't want to tell you so. I, I mean, I thought he did very well to survive that first round, the body shot and the head shot. So that's what that was. He somehow had a last hurrah in the second round and then dug deep for the remaining few rounds. In what was, in many ways, it was a slugging match. It was a toe-to-toe -to -toe brawl. It was, and uh, one thing I kept thinking to myself what middleweight could take the shots that Kel Brook was taking I've never heard people talk about Kel's Brook chin at welterweight but, but at middleweight he took more punishment than it seemed most the, the last 10 Genley Golovkin's opponents could take Mike I, I, I honestly believe Mike that any welterweight and a light middleweight or middleweight tonight other other than Gennady Golovkin, Kel Brook would have been walking out with a stoppage. He's looked unbelievable. He's looked a beast at welterweight. Well, I tell you what, he looked like a beast at middleweight tonight. Just he was up against a monster. Which just endorses the point that David Hay was making about the decision of Dominic Ingle here to save his man for another day. Of course, to save him from what could have been pretty brutal punishment here. And a fight in that round in particular was the first time we got a sense that Brook was beginning to wilt. I mean, we had it by three rounds to one, as you say, maybe that second round was generous, but he certainly threw enough punches to be in consideration, that's, that's for sure. And I think the options for him now are huge and widespread. This has gone out on HBO in the United oh. States. They will have seen what he showed here against the most fearsome man in the middleweight division. Whether he decides now, I think the welterweight division for him is history. He's absolutely done different. what he's done to move up here. But if he moves up, let's say, to, to light middleweight or even in the middleweight division, there are so many options domestically and globally for this man to take well, up. Well, globally, of course, you know, perhaps he'll drag himself into the Canelo mix. In, you know, in, in a sense, the Canelo's, the uh, Saul Alvarez Canelo, the great light middleweight, Weight, welterweight stroke middleweight Mexican who fights Liam Smith next week. He's meant to be fight. He's meant to be fighting Golovkin in November 2017, October 2017. They announced that in April. Go figure that one. They were never known a fight announced that early. But he's in the mix. Cotto still in the mix. Daniel Jacobs, the American who defended a version of the world title last night, is still in the mix. There's four or five fighters, and Mike's absolutely right. What this has done tonight, this has catapulted, catapulted Kell Brook into the middle of a serious boxing system in America because they've been and I, and I can tell you exactly how they would HBO would have presented this tonight this is the fearless 
Golovkin. No one can take his punches. No one can stand his punishment, let alone a welterweight. And they would have sat there, Bernard Hopkins doing the co-coms, screaming, he shouldn't be there, this is impossible. And the Americans will love that, David. They will. His stock has risen. Strange. It sounds crazy to get stopped in five rounds, but your stock is... It, it's gone through the roof. People will now be trying to make as many as many exciting fights as possible. Because Kell Brook, you know, he went over the fight against Porter was an excited fight, you know, when he when he won that title. But now going up two weight divisions and giving such a good account of himself, you know, showing true heart. You know, he did everything you would expect, you know, a good, solid contender to do at middleweight. He's a welterweight. Let's stop talk calling him a middleweight. Because he, as he said, I heard in one interview, Kell Brook saying he ate nine meals a day to yes. get his weight up. You so can't he, could train, he could train six times a day. Exactly. Stupid. <laughs> it, it makes no sense. So he needs to come down back to world play or like middleweight. Like middleweight. And the, 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 the world is his oyster. It truly is. He can do anything now. He can make any fight out there. And, you know, the Americans will absolutely love the way he went out there and let it all hang out. He really did. He left nothing in a tank. He let his hands go. And he's covered in glory right now. And I know one thing. When, when, when and if we actually hear from Golovkin, who speaks perfectly decent English, as does... Abel Sanchez. I'm hoping, I'm hoping they don't claim that they were shocked by how good Brook is. I'm hoping that they praise Brook for what he did and for what and not and, and not talk about what they didn't do. Because I think it's too easy to say they underprepared. They may have considered, they may have considered, they may have considered Brook an easier touch. They may have considered Brook the kind of guy, the kind of guy that they would have no problem with. But I'm 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 truly, I truly believe there is absolutely no chance and no way that they cut corners, David, in, in their preparation. I'm, I'm, I will not accept they cut corners. They may have thought they could win easy, but they didn't cut corners. No, when you've had 17 consecutive knockout world title fights at middleweight, you don't expect, you do not expect a welterweight coming up who's not a noted puncher mm. to give you that much trouble, to give you those problems that Kell Brooks was giving uh, Triple G. Well, there's a lot of chaos here. Kells, in, Kells left the ring, Golovkin's over there, Mike's in the ring now with Eddie Hearn. Eddie, we've just been saying there that even those who predicted this might go five rounds could never have told us what would happen in those five rounds. I mean, it was one of the best five rounds I've seen. And, and listen, I know fans, they want to see blood, they want to see a, a, a duel to the end, you know? But you've got a guy in there who's got a busted eye socket and he can't hardly see Golovkin. He's the most fearsome puncher in the world. And, you know, Kel was gutted that Dominic threw in the towel. But, you know, these people were looking after, you know, the interests of, uh, of those people. So I'm, I'm gutted. And I knew Kel, you know, I really, I really believed he could do it. And I was, you know, getting through the second, third round thinking he's going to do it. I know he's going to do it. And, you know, he started blinking, I think, the second or third round. And when his eyes started to swole up, I knew this was going to be trouble. And, uh, you know, he, he hit Golovkin with some beautiful shots. And I just wish the fight would have gone on longer. But you know, in terms of the five rounds, it was absolutely epic. And I think you know, Kell Brook's stock has, has risen through the roof tonight. And that's what we were saying, that you know, people might wake up in the morning and see the bare result line that he's been beaten in five rounds and wonder how on earth his stock could have been boosted. For my point of view, Amir Khan's wasn't boosted no. by getting beaten by Canelo no, Alvarez. Uh, this uh, was a very different performance. At the end of the day, Kell Brook took not everything that Gennady Golovkin had to throw at him, but he threw pretty much the kitchen sink at him for five rounds. He didn't he go came down. back so quickly. He, did. he didn't go down. He hardly stumbled. I think he had a slight wobble in the second round. Um, he didn't really, other than the eye show, many signs that he was in trouble. He counter-punched him. He jabbed him well. He hit him with some beautiful check left hooks. I mean, you know, he boxed. He hit him with an uppercut in the second round that took Golovkin off his feet. And let me tell you, people talk about Golovkin's power. Let me tell you about Golovkin's chin. I don't believe there's many 160s, it's definitely 154 fighters that would have stood up to those shots from Kell Brook. Um, and, you know, it was just, uh, you know, the energy in the place watching that fight was incredible. And uh, I'm gutted for Kell because he's a winner. You know, he's 36 and 0. He don't do losing. And although he's sort of buoyed by the fact that he was very competitive, and I think Maurizio Suleiman told me he was up on the scorecards, um, you know, he's got to take a lot, a lot of uh, credit for that. And I know, you know, there's a few boos from the fans for but you've got, you know, he could hardly see. And you can't be, be going another six rounds with, with a puncher like Golovkin because, you know, ultimately you're going to get knocked out and, and you're at a huge disadvantage. But he would have gone all night. But, you know, I know Kell Brook's a special fighter and he'll be back. And, you know, this, this was shown all over the world. 
and many, many territories around the world would have realised that Kell Brook is a, a serious fighter, not a 160 fighter that's decided to fight Gennady Golovkin, a welterweight that has gone up and mixed it and is ahead after five rounds. And, you know, other than, a, than an injury, who knows what would have happened in a fight. It would have got very tough for Kell Brook in that fight. But, you know, you saw him, there was a great moment just on these ropes here, Mike, where he took everything from Golovkin and put his hands out and even, you know, sat, laid on the ropes and just... And uh, I was starting to think, you know, this is, this is really, really doable. But in the end, the injury is too much and, and massive respect from Golovkin because he is a beast. He is a beast. Great stuff. Thanks very much, Eddie. And thanks for all your help in the build-up as usual. And we look towards the future being plotted now by Eddie Hearn and others for Kell Brook as I'm making my way across the other side of the ringside area here now to talk to somebody, hopefully from the... Gennady Golovkin yeah, camp, and Sorry. he's just being interviewed by Argentine television at the moment. I might be able to just squeeze through and talk to Abel Sanchez, his longtime trainer. I'm not sure if he's free to talk at the moment. He's just also being involved in this interview just alongside us with Argentine television. The usual chaos here at ringside. There must be at least 50 people <laughs> within five or six square meters of us here, but it's part of the great reaction here to that performance from Kell Brook. Mike, the emotion in Eddie Hearn's voice was rare. I don't think I've ever seen that. I don't think I've ever experienced that. Golovkin is sat just a couple of seats along from us. Uh, Mike's going to try and reach over and get Abel Sanchez. Uh, when he mentioned there were 50 or so people here, he didn't mention that there were any security. Because there aren't, there aren't but it's, it's, fa it's fairly relaxed, fairly, fairly peaceful. Obviously, people want to have uh, selfies taken with David Hay, which, of course, is ridiculous because he's working. We will get Golovkin. He's uh, sitting there looking very relaxed. In fact, he's looks, he doesn't look that marked up, David, but he has, his cheeks do look a little bit red. I mean, he's only about three foot away from us. He does. He, he, he's been in a fight. Let's put it that way. You he, know that. He's definitely been in the fight, and he knows he's been in the fight. He probably got hit more in that fight than he has in his last Certainly three Certainly big shots. Yeah, for sure. Big fight, big shots. That big noteworthy shots that you know, rocked his head back. You don't normally see that. The shots normally sort of slide and bounce off the side of his head. But um, Kel was landing some quality uppercuts. And also, and also, Dave, I would argue that he's, he's hit a man, Kel Brook, more than he's ever hit a man with full-blooded oh. shots. Because, I mean, I, I'm not a big believer in punch stats. I like to trust my eyes. And there were hundreds and hundreds of what, what, what I would classify as finishing punches. Yeah, well, I've, I've seen uh, Gennady, Gennady Golovkin, you know, knock people out with, you know, a third of those punches. Absolutely. Or even less, you know. Most, one punch. most of the single shots. Yes, you know, he's a single punch hitter, but the single shots weren't working. He was having to put combinations together, which all would land, and Kel would somehow still still be on his feet. What's that like, Dave, when, you know, when you've been taking guys out, clipping them anywhere, really, above the navel, and they go over, and then suddenly a guy flush on the chin, and he doesn't go over? When, well, you're, not, when you're not expecting when, it, it's when, a bit when of a shock. When you've maybe shot. cut a few corners in the gym as well. Exactly, exactly. <laughs> it's, 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 a, it's a bad place to be. You're trying to get the fight over and done with as quickly as possible. But... Um, he did what a, a true champion needs to do. You know, he kept the pressure going. He's the naturally bigger man. Yeah. And, you know, when all's even, you know, no matter those those short bursts that weren't working for him, it, it carried on. He knew the longer it went, the more chances those that, those combinations would have a, of winning. That, that, that self-belief. That self Can we... For, just one more. Just one more. We're just, we're just trying to negotiate here with the various members of Golovkin's team. My Kazakh's not as sharp as it once was. Just, I, th I think we've got one minute. I think, we've, we've, I think we may have secured one minute. We're still waiting here for Gennady Golovkin to be released by Argentine TV here. They're taking an awful long time with him. Just trying to work our way through here. I remember Over on the far side of the ring, Kell Brook is now being interviewed by... HBO television, hopefully we'll get a word with him as well, although I think he's soon to be making his way back to the dressing room. And still, this interview is continuing down beneath us. But Steve, Steve Bunce, part of the reason that he's being in such demand here is it was such an amazing contest. Absolutely, and Eddie's absolutely right. When, it, when Eddie was talking there about five rounds, he meant it. That was a fabulous, that was a fabulous five rounds. That was a fabulous five rounds. I mean, they, they, it was relentless. When was there a respite? When was there a moment in the five rounds, Dave, when there was even a 10 second pause, when one of them wasn't trying to throw a shot, taking a shot, or getting caught with a shot? There was no coasting, there was, there was no going for a walk, there was no clinching, it was just non-stop action from the first bell to when 
Dominic Ingua threw in the towel, or when the referee realised that the towel was thrown in. Mike's now got Abel Sanchez. While we're waiting for Gennady, Abel, you said in the build-up, leaving aside the weight differences, that Kel Brook was the most complete fighter that Gennady would have faced. What are your thoughts now afterwards? I was completely right. Uh, not only complete, but an accomplished... Uh, not only a, a fighter, but a, a champion and a guy that's undefeated, a guy that knows, no, doesn't know how to lose, a guy that is very skilled in the ring, is very fast. He's a welterweight, so we knew that coming in that he's going to be, the first couple rounds are going to be difficult because of his speed and of his footwork. But uh, once Gennady started landing the hard shots, uh, it, it was just a matter of time. And I'm glad Dom stopped it uh, so that uh, in Dom's mind, nobody got hurt. Uh, and Kel is a welterweight champion still. And any feelings at all during the course of the four completed rounds of apprehension in the corner? No, absolutely not. We, it's a matter. Gennady is is one of those guys that's methodical. One of those guys that uh, is going to go out and 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 beat on you and look for the perfect shot. Unfortunately, uh, we were lunging a little bit today, and and and, uh, and, and Gennady uh, wasn't able to land that perfect shot. I may just get a couple of questions with Gennady. I think as he's going to being led away going to HBO. To HBO. Yeah. But overall, your your thoughts on, uh, on the performance of Gennady? Uh, he, he graded himself a three or a four. I'd say he's a little better than that, but uh, he did reach a little bit. Uh, the, the, the important thing is we got the W, and the important thing is that we see uh, that uh, a skilled, fast guy like that um, can give us problems. So now it's a matter of going back to the gym and making sure that we correct all the mistakes that we made today. Obviously, there was mistakes, uh, but uh, the power got us out of, out of trouble. And given what you've seen of Kel Brook tonight, would you say he's got a future at light middleweight or even middleweight? I would say he's got a future at light middleweight. I, I don't think that he uh, he's a little too small for the middleweights right now. Maybe when he matures a little bit, not only in body, but in, 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 uh, in, in fights uh, with the bigger guys. Uh, he's definitely a... Uh, absolutely. He, once he vacates a welterweight, he's going to beat whoever he fights in a, in a junior middleweights. Thanks for your time, Abel. Congratulations you. on another win. Thank you. Right, you're listening well, to Five Live Sport. What a dramatic night at the O2. We'll be back with the guys very shortly. David Hayes, Steve Bunce and Mike Costello.